Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. Oh, 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 we didn't have volume. What's up, folks? Cards here. Uh, glad I checked on the volume. Apparently, my OBS update wanted to uh, wanted to mess with me there. But it's the happiest day of the year. New journeyman stream for Draft Day Sports, the new release, College Basketball 2021. Been talking about it for months, ever since December. We've been gearing up for this. We knew that it was coming. Uh, checking the device here. We are live. We're connected and going. Uh, hopefully Chris is getting out the word. Uh, what's up, Breeze? Breeze, can you hear me? I had a little bit of a uh, technical difficulty there, so uh, give me a give me a thumb sideways if you can hear me. Um, so guys, this is the new save. This is our team, the Bellarmine Knights, and uh, it's going to be a journeyman save. So you know we'll be here couple of years I don't know but uh, if you check it out this is actually really cool so if you come over all right cool breeze can hear me so we're up and running uh, so if you come over and look at Bellarmine uh, this isn't a bug this isn't anything wrong with the mod school history O and O this is a brand new division one team folks so we are starting at a school that has never previously participated in division one basketball and you know being a Louisville Cardinal you can see here, uh, no surprise why I'm down with Bellarmine. They're in Louisville. You know, I got connections there. I went to basketball camps there and, and know people that went there, taught there, all that good stuff. So uh, I play, hey, I, I'm pretty sure I told somebody about my hole in one on a par three golf course. That was Bellarmine's par three ball cor uh, golf course. So uh, we're going with the Bellarmine Knights. Uh, I did go for this year with a little bit of a stronger starting coach attribute wise and I'm going to take you around the save and show you everything before we get rolling uh, you can see here uh, my coach skills are 55 across the board so I think I went with the all right, not rookie not amateur whatever the next level is average I think this is average uh, just because you know the last time we were we did like six years, so like 10, 12, 15 streams at just the lowest of the low with no ability to compete, do anything. So we're gonna change it up a little bit here. We'll probably get some more interesting offers a little bit sooner into our career, but uh, that's what we're doing. I, I thought that that would, I thought it would be, yo, Chris is in chat, what's up, buddy? Uh, I thought that it would, just might be a little bit more interesting this way. So we're going with average, 55 skills. Audio is grainy, okay. So see, this is a, oh, am I, all right, let me, let me try something. I'm going to change my audio here. Tell me, tell me how that sounds. It might have been going through my uh, webcam audio microphone instead of picking up this one. Is that any better, Chris? See if that's any better. I changed the input, and it looks like it's still... Perfect. All right, so it was an OBS update that threw me off. I haven't I haven't streamed since OBS updated, so uh, my setting was all off. So what it was doing, I just I was already live when I realized I wasn't broadcasting audio, so I quickly changed the feed, and it apparently went to my webcam instead of. Ah, uh, don't do that. It apparently went to my webcam instead of my. Uh, awesome microphone which I've got right here in front of me 
So now we're on the awesome microphone. We're, we should be good to go. We we'll spin this bad boy around, get the device all set up and going uh, so that we can get rocking and rolling, guys. Bellarmine Knights, here we go, Sunday, May 1st. Let's take a look around the team. Uh, we actually, first, first, let's look at the emails. Uh, this is our welcome, welcome to Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2021. Uh, we made it, we're here, and we're rolling. Let's see. Um, recruit class rankings. My boys, lucky number 13 there with the Louisville Cardinals. Uh, Bellarmine didn't fare quite so well. All the way down here at 91. What's up, Beach Bear? You've been waiting for this? Buddy, I've been waiting for this for three months. I'm so pumped to be doing this tonight. So, very excited. <laughs> oh, says I got disconnected from chat. Uh, my device is giving me issues, so if I miss your, if I miss your comments, I apologize. Um, but you know, make sure comment on YouTube or something at some point, uh, hop onto the discord and, and grab me. I'll definitely respond. I'm not trying to ignore anybody. I'm just getting, uh, every, all the technology is trying to give me a hard time tonight. Cause I'm too excited. I'm trying to do something new. Uh, and I just want to get to the basketball really. So let's, let's do it. Scheduling. All right. So we got one scholarship open $151,000 as far as a budget goes. Assistant coaches come off the top. Whoo. We are cheaping out on our coaches, boy. I'll tell you that much. Let's see if I can... One more time. One more time. Get this straightened out. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, so, let's look at this roster, guys. I'm kind of interested in this top 100 recruiting class that we supposedly had. So, it looks like Carlos Keeley... And you can see the whole team's from Kentucky. Carlos Keeley, a junior point guard. Looks like a player. Uh, Tim Fournay, a senior power forward, is all right. Everybody else sucks. What's up, Coolest Jedi? What's up, CTG? Glad to have you in here, buddy. Is that a Florida A&M? That looks like a... That looks like... Is that a Rhino or a Rattler? I can't tell. I, my, my device is uh, not large enough to see that. I need a dual monitor set up so I can see exactly what that is. But, oh... Uh, Agalia is going to show up and talk trash. All right. All right. I see how it's going to go tonight. Uh, I feel all the love in the house. Uh, so, but anyway, it looks like we're a, a two-man team, and, and those two guys aren't all that great. Uh, it's great to see, you know, all the cities that I grew up with, you know, Louisville, Radcliffe, Glasgow, Harrodsburg, Henderson, Bardstown, Faradale, Shelbyville. I think Shelbyville's where I used to try to. Uh, I I never would have, but Shelbyville might be where some people I knew used to try to buy alcohol underage. So this is a local team for a local boy. Who do we got? Feel for the Bellarmine Knights. Hey, this is a new D1 school. So what I can say, Agalia, I guarantee you, I won't be worse than their prior Division One uh, leadership. Guaranteed. I can guarantee it, or your money back. I'll double your money back. Uh, but anyway, this is the roster that we're rolling with in the first year. We've only got one scholarship, so straight away, uh, we might be cutting a few folks. You can check out our office as far as our goals. Uh, win 10 games. Uh, that could be rough. <laughs> win the conference tournament. I almost guarantee that won't happen. Uh, you can check out the philosophies that I've set up here. Gone for a, a, a bit of a mix, youth versus veterans, maybe a little bit favor in the youth a fairly deep player rotation fast offense crash the boards high defensive intensity high defensive crash in the boards uh, up the full court defense i've never really done this but i'm going to up the full court defense i want to put pressure on people and i'm also going to rotate through the players a little bit more so instead of having those top guys playing you know 34 minutes maybe they only play 30 maybe even 28 back that off a little bit because you know by the time we get set up at a school we want to be at and get that roster built we want to get those bench players minutes and we want we want all that talent to to do something and be on the court and so uh the starters are going to go hard when they're in and they're going to get frequent breaks and hopefully that doesn't piss them off you know hopefully they don't like oh, i want starter minutes and get mad at me for having less than 32 or 34 i, I don't know what the the break is on that i want starter minutes threshold so if anybody in chat knows shout it out Share all my secrets for CBGM. That is exactly what I'm doing on the stream. Uh, I told everybody I I'm a big fan of just sharing all the secrets and putting us all on the same playing field. 
and seeing what happens. Uh, and usually what happens is I get my butt kicked. But, uh, you know, win 10 games is a career goal. <laughs> Agalia's got the biggest yap in here. Let's see what you do, buddy. Without your uh, your little recruiting glitches and your big fancy school with all that prestige, like, let's see what you got. I'm ready to throw down. Uh, college basketball 21. CBGM's where it's at, by the way. All right, so Vader in chat is saying 32 minutes for the starter thing, and I would totally believe that. So uh, I'll have to keep an eye on that for those guys that are very, very touchy about their playing time. Uh, but... Getting back to the CBGM, guys, I'm assuming that a lot of people in chat are already in CBGM or already aware of it. But if you're not, we got a awesome, awesome, awesome multiplayer league that Chris has been working really hard on through GM Games. Uh, we're going to be a, a, a highlighted, highlighted, featured league. We're going to be a featured league through Wolverine Studios. So the developer of the game is you know recognizing this online league, and they're going to keep, I think, a link to it on their webpage. But... Like Chris has done work. So it's going to be a really deep, immersive experience. It's going to be long-lasting. We're putting a, he, I know Chris is putting a lot into it. And so if you guys aren't in it already, jump in. If you got any interest in college basketball, you can watch my stream tonight, see all the things not to do, and then jump right in and be ahead of the game uh, starting it, as soon as it kicks off. But hit up the GM Games Discord for that. Uh, picked eight. An ACC school. Uh, who, who'd you take, Agalia? All right, but anyway, uh, jumping into the actual play, Beach Bear nailed it on the head. I've only got one scholarship, and, you know, that feels like a problem to me uh, because I would normally, coming into a school like this, I'd want to revamp the roster. Now, I have no idea what my level of recruiting ability, what this school's prestige, academics, facilities, all that stuff, like what kind of prospects I'm actually going to get. So, what I'm going to do is maybe just cut one or two players somewhere nice and easy. Like, see, this power forward's a freshman, but, I mean, he's a, he's got a star and a half. I'll let that go, and I'm not getting too deep into each individual ability. Where I'm looking at is right here. I got two one-star freshman point guards. Uh, you know, point guard is a position where I've got an upperclassman. He seems like the best player on the team ratings-wise. Uh, what other kind of freshman do I have here? Oof. A ha I have a half-star freshman shooting guard. He's gone. All right, so we're going to cut Terrell Crawford. And then one of either Miller or Hess. Got to wait another year to get the credit card back to get the full game. <laughs> uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame will be a good one. They've, you know, they've got a, uh, the academics is interesting. Maybe they're at the right threshold where the academics will bring in enough recruits, but the, the SAT threshold won't turn them away where like Duke is a little bit too far. You know, it, yeah, it brings guys in, but it's so hard to get guys to qualify at Duke. Uh, so between Miller and Hess, I mean, the ratings are, are kind of similar, but look over here at the potential. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Hess and Miller. These are the two freshmen. So Hess is three-and-a-half star potential, whereas Miller's one-and-a-half, which doesn't do much for me. But also Ward, the sophomore, doesn't do much for me. So what are we looking at here? Passing, handling. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know what? Let's, let's let go of Jim Miller. Uh, Ward will be gone in a few years. Uh, let's, let's get rid of Miller. And then the shooting guard. Let's let Crawford go. So now we got three scholarships to play with. And we got some good potential there in our front court. Look at David Thompson. That looks nice. Look at Frank Hamilton. That looks nice. Scoring wise, we don't have anybody on this team that can realistically score. Yeah, Chris, so uh, I was explaining right when we kicked off before people got on. But, yeah, my association with Bellarmine. Uh, first of all, uh, I took a peek over here early. It's in Louisville, Kentucky, so it's close. Uh, and I was saying, you know, I know people that have gone here. Uh, I think I did some basketball camps there. I know, like, my family did summers there. Uh, I've told the story about my first ever hole-in-one, my only ever hole-in-one that bounced off a tree 30 yards to the right. That was on Bellarmine's par-3 golf course. 
So I'm very familiar with, and I don't even think that golf course exists anymore. So that might date me a little bit, but you know, I wear a hat for a reason. Your boy's not a, your boy's not a young guy anymore. Uh, anyway, yeah, I've got ties to Bellarmine for sure. And also their actual head coach is Scotty Davenport, who was Denny Crum's first assistant for years and years. So I love Bellarmine. It's really cool to see them D1 and all of this, all these zeros over here. Uh, that's not a bug. That's not an error. This is a fresh team in D1. So that's how I know I'll be their best Division One coach ever, at least until I leave. All right, so let's see where we're at. SAT minimum is 900. Okay. Michigan going to be strong in CBGM. All right. No, the game's not free, but you can definitely, if you haven't checked it out, uh, Patty Mills, you can get a free demo of the game so that you can give it a bit of a test drive and see if you like it, uh, which is a really cool thing. Draft uh, Wolverine Studios does with all their releases, I believe. So head on over to their website, check out the demo, and if you're down with it, uh, it's got great value. I pour hundreds of hours into this game. If you're into college basketball, this is where it's at, the deepest basketball uh, college basketball simulation that exists, period. Uh, uh you know, Jedi, it's going to be it's going to be see what happens. I don't know what the progression is going to be. We're going to stay at Bellarmine until I find another job that interests me. Uh, I can say I do not intend to end up at Louisville in this save. Uh, uh, I don't want to have too many Louisville saves in CB21. My CBGM team is going to be Louisville, and that's my only Louisville save here. So if I end up at a Blue Blood program, it won't be Louisville. There are some out there that interest me, but that won't be one of them this time. All right, so I got 70,000. You know what I'm going to do? Because it's so, so important this year. Uh, we're going with the premium. You know, even with Bella. Oh, hold on. First, sorry, 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 sorry. First, we need to go look at our staff and make adjustments there. So Doug Davenport, which is probably Scotty. It's probably some relation to Scotty if I had to take a wild guess. Uh, these coaches suck. At least their ratings in here do. In real life, I'm sure they're great people, but... Uh, their ratings suck. <laughs> Let's see who's available for hire. Recruiting wise, bringing Tim Murphy's a 53. Davenport's the only one that's decent, and he's a 31. So you're gone. We're we're just firing the entire staff. We're even firing out Davis. This dude, oh, he owns the Raiders. What are we doing? And he's gone. <laughs> I don't know if we'll improve on it, but. Uh, Shazlo, thanks for the subscription, buddy. Love to see that. See, normally move, you just don't. Yeah, normally I'm going to move. Uh, I'm going to start off here, earn my, whatever you want to call it, earn my stripes, and then see if I can't move on. Because, like, to try to compete for a national championship at a school like this, is it's just not realistic. And I like to see. I like to give people that arc of the career, you know, start off somewhere small, try to build them up a little bit, and then maybe some type of intermediate school and then a maybe a bigger school or turn one of those intermediate schools into a bigger school. Turning a school like Bellarmine into a bigger school won't happen. So I really need to be in like one of the top six or seven conferences. Uh, once I'm there, uh, if I hit a team that I'm interested in and I like, I might stay there. So this very well could be a two-team save over the course of things but again you never know what happens i mean we get some uh we get some streamer beverages going and uh, you never know sometimes i let chat make the call we're just here to have a good time so sorry hit the wrong button there let's go out and promote oh yep this is the right one is it hard to move conferences uh you could ask chris about that i've actually disabled the conference movement in all of my saves so I can't speak to it. All right, so we brought in Tim Murphy, 54 a year. Let's see. So I got 97 left. So I, I need to go really cheap on my, on my other two. So, you know, the, the recruiting is going to be where we can make some something happen here. Maybe I shouldn't even fire the other two coaches, but what's done is done. All right, now we want somebody that can kind of develop players for the second assistant. He wants 38 a year. What if we drop down to 37, 40, 38? Most of these guys want to round that mark. So Curtis Weathers will be our second assistant. 
Well, man, Curtis Weathers, that looks like me from uh, where, where Chris created me uh, for what, Northern Kentucky, Chris? He made one of my coaches that picture. And now we want somebody who can scout for third assistant. Sixteen a year for twenty-seven scouting. Good to go. We've got our staff. All right, so those are polar opposites between Weathers, uh, who looks like my hairline, and Heffernan, who looks like one of my kids, basically. Eighteen seasons to get Long Beach State to the Big West. Yikes. Yikes, that's a lot. Is that Florida A&M Rattlers, CTG? That's, you know that was my last year save. Don't, don't show me up, please. All right, so we got our coaches here. We'll see what kind of... All right, so that knocked a big hole in our budget. We can no longer afford that $30,000 report that I really wanted to get. Uh, so we'll have to skip it this year, maybe next year. All right, I'm glad, I'm glad though, that I addressed the coaches because I think that having that improved recruiter is going to be a much bigger deal than having the gold report. But the gold reports, in my opinion, are much more uh, helpful and important in this year's version than in last year's. So that's tip number one. All right, so we're going to Georgia and Memphis. Curtis doesn't care about his appearance with the sag and polo. <laughs> These guys are trash. Oh, well, you know. It happens. All right, so we're on to June 26th. We're on to recruiting. We've got the three scholars. Let's see what the inbox is giving us. Giving us the summer travel and recruiting begins. So uh, let's hit the road and see if we've got any kind of interest here obviously we're going to stick in region we might be sticking in state this is southeast region let's see interested recruits yikes whole oh, yikes all right that's some scary stuff got four interested two-star recruits Wow. I'm adding the Kentucky guys, even if they're one star. Because we're going to look. If they do anything except for not stand out at either of those two camps, they're our very first targets. All right, so let's go. Let's just view by state. And let's go position by position. Do it like we usually do. We'll grab our 10. Uh, let's see here. Call watch list. So we got a point guard, so we want to add about nine point guards. Oh, and we don't have that many in state. Point, this point guard only in Kentucky. This is all the point guards in Kentucky? Alright, so he has no interest, but he's got a decent GPA, so we're going to throw him in there. And we're just going to stay in state with those. Shooting guard, we are got several of them on the list. Uh, let's throw the Juco on the list. 2.9 is fine. These guys are all fine GPA-wise. He's already on the list. 2.0, absolutely not. Uh, gosh. Oh, the three-star in-state recruit has a 2.2. That's a no-fly zone for me. Unless they have interest. Keep in mind, guys, once again... Uh, yeah, Vader, are you asking about uh, shortcuts as far as the key bindings that I'm using? Uh, if you look on this screen and come right up here to the help button, you can bring it up and it gives you all of the hot buttons. So what I'm doing is going through and hitting the B button to add players to both lists. You can add them just to call or watch. Each list has a 50 person maximum. I just like to put them on both. Um, that's the way that I've always done it. I'm sure you can get more on the list doing it different ways, but that's how I roll. And then you also have hot key bindings for some of the visits, you know, watching film, scouting live, campus hosting, all that good stuff. So uh, all of that information is available right here with the question mark help button and then turning it on and off right over here. But it defaults to on. Yeah, all the hoopers in Kentucky this year playing football, that might be right. 
Yeah, I don't think Kentucky has basketball courts on this save. It's actually a mod I input where Kentucky has no basketball courts. Like uh, all those hoops that used to hang up on the side of barns throughout the entire state with the barns that are painted go big blue and a bunch of nonsense like that that Agalia probably came up with. Uh, all those were demolished in this fictional save that I've created here. So, all right, we already threw the power uh, small forwards on the list. Power forwards. Woo, look at that. We got a five-star power forward in state. This guy glitched the save. He stole all the basketball hoops. Chris Green's house is surrounded with basketball hoops. He's the only one that's got them. Uh, but he's got a 2.2. We've got absolutely no shot at a five-star guy from Bellarmine. We'll throw these three-star guys on the list. I doubt we've got much chance at them. These two-star guys, maybe we can talk to. So it looks like we have some options at the power forward position, which would be nice. Uh, this would be another nice pickup. Preston Means, a three-star, 2.6, which is fine GPA-wise. Gonna add all those, all three of those to the list. So that is our list. We got 37 guys that we've added to our call and watch list between all positions so we're going to start off just trying to host and all three so we got three three star guys coming in and once you host them sometimes you can generate some interest like that now if they come in for the visit and they absolutely hate it uh in state it's not a huge deal and we've got thirty thousand dollars so i'm not going to lose sleep over it but like if, if this if these were Different scenario, right? Say I'm at a blue blood school and I've added my just dream watch list onto this. If these are all five-star guys and I bring them in for visits and they say, hey, I don't have any interest, I'd cut them off the list right there. It's better to go after guys that you've got a chance at than guys that you don't. And uh, if they don't have any interest in their visit, especially with top-rated recruits, especially on brutal recruiting difficulty, which I do have turned on here. Uh, I don't think I've showed you guys yet. But here are my settings for this save. Uh, normal injuries, normal job pressure, brutal uh, brutal recruiting difficulty level. Uh, so uh, you, you just, if they don't have a good visit and they have no interest, you're not going to bring them in, uh, especially with the high rated recruits. Now, two and three star recruits in state, if you got a decent recruiter and a decent head coach, if they're not getting interest from somewhere else, maybe you can turn them around. But if, if they have a terrible visit and they're not showing any interest whatsoever by like, middle of the season cut them loose guys cut them loose <clears throat> Ooh, c muller following i appreciate that buddy all right uh we're, we already watched film let's see none of those guys are going to want to talk to us and our ability is still lower than 100 on recruiting so we're still going to get hung up on a lot and that's one of my least favorite features about this game so I'm not going to spend all day doing it. I'll try these guys a couple of times to try to unlock some of these pitch categories. But if they're not going to talk to me, like, see, I just get frustrated with that. It's not the most interesting of game mechanics to me because I don't even know who I want to go after yet. So we're just going to advance. We're advancing, guys. We're moving forward through the save for the first time. We're past June 26th, and we're going to see what's up. We're going to see if we can't bring in a little bit of talent to the Bellarmine Knights, get this thing going the right way. Uh, once we get a little bit through recruiting, I do need to... Oh, look at that. We got some interest out of Preston Means. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. That's a good start to the save, folks. That is what you want to see. He likes it. He likes the people. It'll be tough, but he'll, he'll let us know. Uh, these two guys, they didn't think it's worthwhile. That's not the message that you really want to see. Uh, out of these recruits so like i was saying if this were a different scenario these two guys i'd just cut them right here but uh, as it is it's not killing me to leave them on the list it's not like my list is full and i'll go through uh the next handful of them gonna start getting some film on these fellows you guys can see if you haven't played around with 2021 yet rather than scrolling with the mouse wheel it's now uh there's some the pages down here that you click on uh, so let's call up mean see if he wants to talk to us a little bit about what he's interested in love to have you at school buddy oh you don't want a school location yeah number one number one baby I, I haven't figured out yet in all my time playing these i've played draft day sports college basketball all the way back to like the 2015 version i think i've never figured out if they're more likely to hang up on you if you if you hit on something they're not interested in 
you know, like if I just call all these guys up and hit on school location, do I have a better chance at getting them to not hang up on me? I have no idea. Why do I call instead of text? There's absolutely no difference either way. Um, I've actually gone back and forth a little bit with it. When I was doing a whole lot of just high volume, I was going back and forth between calling and texting to see if like I could close out of the screen faster and keep moving faster. Uh, we do have a number of scout lives that we can do. So we're going to hit those on our three highest rated recruits that have interest in us. Just to keep that interest up. Now we're going to get summer camps. Las Vegas not going to matter. Uh, Houston not going to matter. So I'm going to advance two more times here before our recruiting actions actually take place. Yeah, 17, 18 people in here. That's, that's good to see. Uh, especially just because, like, first of all, I'm super excited to bring this to you, and I hope that's coming through. But second of all, like, this is such like, – I thought that College Basketball 2020 from Wolverine Studios was amazing. I didn't know how in the world they were going to make it better. But they absolutely did. This is – they've made some just really interesting improvements. I'm loving it. Uh, nobody liked that visit. <clears throat> Uh, so that's not a good sign. We do have a handful of our players that went to Georgia. So let's see if any of them did well. Uh, Anthony Knight didn't stand out. Ronald Henry was in the top. Oh, has he already visited us? Man, that would be a massive, massive. Uh, he didn't stand out. Ronald Henry would be a massive land for us. Nobody else stood out. Ronald Henry, the power forward. Just catapulted up to the top of our list right there he is he already visited he had absolutely no interest so that's a terrible sign but he's the best player that we're recruiting right now so we might as well throw a scholarship his way and just see if we can do anything anything at all to get a little bit of interest out of him Oh, he gave me the five minutes, and then I couldn't get him to open up about school location. But he did give me the five minutes. Let's text him. Nah, I lose my number. <laughs> so see, I was kind of I was texting, then I was calling, bouncing back and forth, seeing if I could. Uh, don't bother calling again. He's not digging me all of a sudden. He wanted to give me five minutes, and now he doesn't. Come on, man, just a couple quick texts. <laughs> lose your number. He's not interested this week for sure. For sure. Let's open it back up to all positions. Let's see here. Means, we're pitching him on location. That's a done deal. Harmon didn't stand out. Pretty sure of that. I don't know if Eric Gill went or not. Let's get, uh, let's see if we can get location. I mean, location's going to be what gets it for a lot of these guys for us. All right, that's all of our phone time, so we can advance now. we got a summer camp coming up. <laughs> lose my Yeah, the lose my number is kind of funny. Uh, yeah, the five minutes being nothing is kind of frustrating. Wish it would have gone well for us. But it didn't. We're moving on. We got more recruits to host. Seeing what kind of interest we can draw up. Keep on those two-star guys. Oh, let's see. Sometimes these JUCOs are really good. Like, they're going to come in and not know much of your system or whatever. But it's nice to have them because they come in, they're a little bit more coached up. You know what I mean? Beardtown asks a great question about when to offer scholarships, whether it helps or hurts when you're first recruiting a player. And you know what? I think that's one of those things that everybody kind of has their own experience and their own uh, superstitions, I guess you would call it. I just throw it out. I mean, I feel like if I, I... I've never seen any significant difference, okay? So I always just throw them out because I think, hey, if I wanted... If I was you know, being recruited, I would want the scholarship earlier rather than later. And I've always found, again, this might be like just my thing 
you know, I've I've done it, and so I, I it gets in my own head like it's a thing I made up. But to me, when I've treated these guys like I'm really recruiting them, like I really slow down, pay attention, like okay, I haven't unlocked all your stuff. I'm on a I'm out of I'm out of time. But like when I slow down and recruit these guys the way that I would want to be recruited, I seem to have more success. So um, I don't know. I just throw it out there as soon as possible, and to be honest, I've never seen any significant difference. I've been on the message boards more than my fair share, and I've never seen anyone else say that it has any significant difference. So I'm rolling with it probably doesn't make a a huge difference, Um, but don't take my word for it. (laughs) How's that work? Is that enough of a complete non-answer? I take no responsibility for bad advice that I give. It's the only type I have to give out. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't see the pattern. All right, so we got our film watching in. Let's bug this guy some more. <clears throat> Just to see. God. Not having it, is he? We even got the offer. What I will do with him, I'll keep him, uh, I'll keep that scholarship offer available to him until we get to in-home recruiting, and I will make a visit to him and see if my head coach's recruiting ability can turn him around. Uh, right now, he's being recruited by my assistant. Uh, all of this, like, campus visits, um, that's some kind of multiplier on your assistant coach recruiting rating. The in-home is – the calls and the in-home is when your head coach rating really comes in. So, at the very least, I'm going to make an in-home visit on Ronald Henry. Thanks for the subscription there, Beard Town. Chris, thanks for the subscription to your own channel, buddy. Appreciate it. You know, it's just good to see the the subscriptions flow. I don't care who they're coming from, but uh, I love it. I love to get some subscriptions. I love to see a good good crowd in the chat here. So uh, let's keep this popping. Do we need to unlock some more on means? I believe. Is that in real life? There, Beach Bear. Did, did Mississippi State beat Kentucky in real life? If so, you just made my day better. Love to see that. How's it? Agalia, are you still there? Can you uh, speak to that one for us? Oh, these Kentucky fans. Always trying to mess up my day. Uh, Let's see where to summer camp. Let's move past that. That may actually be Memphis. I haven't been checking the mails. Yeah, this should be memphis and big apple i can get some more hosting and live visits in real quick and again i i usually go live visit on my three the three recruits i'm most interested in that have interest in me Uh, maybe i should do some live visits for ronald henry maybe that'll spur him to perk up a little bit yeah these games are really awesome beer town really really are yeah you wish they'd release the game on mac uh talk to chris he's got it running on his mac he, i don't know what kind of voodoo he does in the background but he knows how to get stuff like that done so if that's what you're looking for make sure that you reach out to him and maybe he can get you rolling I don't know. you know I, i'm sure if you just tell him that you're interested in joining cbgm uh we want that league as loud and full and happening as possible so you know Reach out. He might he might hook you up somehow. Let's check out the emails here, see what we got going on. Some campus visits. Alright, Memphis. We definitely want to check that out. So, first of all, Ronald Henry, I guarantee this guy did good. Top twenty five at Memphis. So, yeah, he's definitely uh somebody that we're gonna keep on, keep after. Anthony Knight didn't stand out. Oh, I cannot remember. Does this... Uh, I'm not sure how that goes. Quinn White was in the top 25. Quentin Butler was in the top 5. We know Ronald Henry. Hassel was decent. Wright didn't stand out. Stokes did not stand out. Trilly was decent. Means was decent. We got a handful. All right, so look. Uh, we got some options here, guys. We've got some options. First of all, Quentin Butler was top five. 
I don't think he has any interest. So let me see here. Am I just Henry Means Butler? No, I'm not just scrolling through. Uh, I wish I, I wish there was somewhere I was just scrolling through these guys. Quinn White, Quentin Butler. Let's go take a look real quick. See if any of these names jump out. MSU Spartans presented by Rocket Mortgage. Is that some kind of April Fool's joke? Yeah, buddy. We're, we're recruiting. We're bringing in players. So let's get the CBG, CBGM, CG. Get my acronyms mixed up. Trying to uh, recruit. And, so there's Quentin Butler. He didn't care for our visit. So not great there. Means, however, was decent. So that would be a real good pickup for us. And you know what, I, what I've always thought is that the camp performance is a little bit of an indicator as to current ability, and then the, the recruiting rating, the statistics, and all that is a little bit more of a reflection of potential. Uh, so Means is kind of checking both of those boxes for us, uh, which, I mean, he's into location, he's from, he's in state. Ooh, I do not like the talented player but could work harder note. Uh, but... It, it, at this stage in the game, beggars can't be choosers. So, Treely has some interest. He was decent. All right. Harmon, not on the list. Gill, Daniels, no. I'm looking for anybody else that attended that camp, and I'm not seeing them, so... I think most of them are going to be up here. Quentin Butler, no interest. Henry, no interest. Anthony Knight, Brett Hassel. Most of them are up there. And then Preston Means, Jason Treely, Robert Harmon. Eric Gill? No. Well, what were the guards? See, once I get my targets, like we, we're just going to flow right through the rest of the stream immediately. Anthony Knight didn't stand out. Quinn White was top 25, but I don't think he has interest. And then it's just a bunch of inside guys. So we've offered Henry. <clears throat> if if he does not like our in-home visit, then we're going to bounce straight over to Trilly, who was decent. So we should try to unlock his location. Ugh. I'm just going to go location on all these guys. I, I cannot stand calling or texting recruits until I get that head coach ability up much much closer to 100 so they quit hanging up on me and whatnot yeah stanley this is a new save brand new first stream on college ba basketball 2021 so this is our journeyman save with bellerman and uh wait a minute who do i, I want to go see quinn white it's our journeyman save with bellerman quinn white okay he has no interest but we haven't brought him in yet Hopefully, he's this round of visits, and hopefully he has some interest. Because if he does, we're going to offer him. That would be a nice... Yes! There's the interest. That's our third offer, Quinn White. So, he was actually top 25 at Memphis. We come over here and check this out. He went from no interest to cool interest, so... Uh, he's not going to be one of those that says, I th didn't think it was worthwhile. He actually enjoyed the visit. Uh, like see Morley Harmon he didn't think it was worthwhile so he's not a target these other guys are uh, I'm kind of excited about both Means and White and truly decent not spectacular versus Ronald Henry who was he was top 25 at Georgia and Memphis I mean if I was gonna um, Let's see what we can do. Ronald Henry is one of those players. Like, he might be, well, it's a brand new Division One school, so I guess being the best in school history wouldn't mean much at this point, but he would be like one of those guys that will go back, you know, 50 streams down the road when we come back to check this out. Uh, we might remember that name, you know what I mean? He might be a real good one. I don't know if he's a B.B. Higgins, but he'll be a solid player. <laughs> All right, I've got my offers out. 
uh, I need to unlock location on all these guys, make sure that that's something I can pitch and run with, and then we're off to the races, buddy. We got to get strategy and practice plan, and then I want to start simming games. Yeah, Bellarmine is a brand new D1 school in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, go back and check out the stream. I've uh, talked about sort of my connections to Bellarmine a couple of times. Uh, do have some. Not like personally, just lived experiences and that sort of thing. All right. Preston means we're good to go. Quinn. Wait, Quinn White, the guy that was top 25, he just went to cool interest? Oh, he was the two star. He just went up in star rating. Okay. And look at Ronald Henry. Almost up into the top 100. So no surprise there at all. Let's see if we can get five minutes. Uh, uh, oh, he gave us the five minutes. Location. Yes. Thank you. Plane time, maybe. Oh. Ronald Henry, talk to us, boys. If we land all three of these guys, that would be absurd. He's into location for sure. I want to see if that changes next week. It used to change once they would give you the five minutes. It would go from no interest to cool interest. So top 25 there. Uh, these are our three targets. We know we're pitching them all location. We know that Treely is our other target. Let's text him real quick. Get location unlocked. Number one to him. That's right. All right, guys. We're advancing straight to September 11th. So... Uh, yeah, I don't know if Bellerman was D2, or they might have been NAIA. Uh, I'm honestly not certain, and I feel bad for not knowing, but yeah, so be it. I don't know. I don't pretend to know. Going to get some in-home visits here and see what we can do with this recruiting class. Ronald Henry is still showing up with no interest, but he has given us the five minutes a couple of times. He is into location. I'm gonna take my chances there. I mean, you gotta you gotta aim high at some point, or else you're never gonna reach the stars, right? Non-inspirational quote for the day. Biggest improvement on this version, I think that the recruiting is more difficult, more realistic. Uh, that's one of the big ones, and actually. The absolute biggest improvement, in my opinion, is the recruiting process as a whole. And it was a little bit different on this one because when when you're at such a small school and you have such little interest, uh, it, this it's not as cool of an improvement. But when you're at a bigger school and you got a lot of interest and you're just going through, like check this out, I can, I can bounce over to point guards, right? Say I'm at a blue blood school, all these guys, I'm interested in all of them. I can come in here to his card, Morley Harmon. And then I can just scroll right here at the top through each of these guys' cards. And if you notice, I'm only getting the six or seven point guards. I'm back to Harmon already. I'm only getting the guys on the list I'm looking at right now. Uh, I'm getting their camp information. I'm getting their attitude, their recruit pitches, their rankings, their top ten schools, which when you have the gold report, this is a massive, massive uh, advantage and I will have the gold report as often as I possibly can if I can realistically recruit with the money left over. And honestly, I had like, if I had gotten the gold report here, I think I would have had about 13,000 to recruit with. And knowing that I was only going to recruit in state, maybe I should have done it uh, because it's such a big advantage. But right here from this screen, I can watch film. I can host the recruit. I can contact the recruit. I can offer a scholarship. None of this was available before. It was all done out here. And I know that might not seem huge, but when you play this as much as I have, trust me, that's a big deal. It's a huge quality of life improvement, and I absolutely love it. The other real, like, the real difference is when you come to Dashboard, this is a completely new screen. It's very similar to the Pro Basketball uh, 2020 and 21, obviously. Uh, but they revamped the Dashboard, and then when you come into these players... They've got their proficiency shown here on their player card, but the new introduction this year is the player types. So you've got bucket getters, you've got rebounders, you've got uh, defensive specialists, uh, playmakers, sharpshooters, attackers, all these different player types. 
And again, that was something that was in their pro game. It was not in their college game. And it adds a whole new dimension. And it, it can make certain players, like guys that you thought were dangerous before, like they're beasts now. So uh, these player types are great. And it's a one of my most uh, most appreciated and beloved new features in the 2021 version of the game. All right, so we can, re- we can advance one more time. We're going to hit September 11th. And now it's time for in-home visits. And let's see what we're actually doing here. Yeah, easier to sort, easier to spot, get the information. It's all right there. It's concise. Uh, and it's just quality of life. I mean, simulation-wise, a, a lot of the, oh, Ronald Henry already decided and he's going to Georgia Tech. See, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm not mad losing a guy to Georgia Tech. If my kid was trying to decide between Georgia Tech and Bellarmine, I'd send him to Georgia Tech every time. But uh, we were prepared for that. We weren't getting a lot of love from him. That's not a surprise. The only thing that surprises me is usually the top top guys commit early. I don't see these guys in the 150s commit early all that often. You usually get a chance to at least get in the door with them, but uh, in this case we didn't. So we had our backup plan. It was Jason Treely. We're going to go ahead and offer him. We've already got location unlocked. We're in his top 10. Let's check here. All right, so means we're in his top 10. And Quinn White. We are not in Quinn White's top 10 yet. And that top 10 is also huge, guys. Um, like the, the information that you're getting in here with these top 10 schools and how much interest they have is huge in this game. And that's why it's just brutal not to have any of that information. Like if, if Preston Means is hot on some other school right now, I basically don't have a chance. But if he's got a bunch of cools or maybe a warm in here... Like, I'm still right in the mix, but without that gold report, I have no idea. I'm, I'm kind of flying blind here. So the gold report, if you can at all get it, that's my number one biggest, as far as my top ten suggestions for this game, find that gold report is the one thing that last year I may not have recommended as strongly, but this year, buy the gold report by any means necessary, seriously. All right, let's, let's just visit all three of these folks talk about location let's see means white truly i don't know that there's were we interested in Harmon? he's a hard working kid interested in playing time um hmm Who was top five at Memphis? Quentin Butler? Yep. Let's text him. All right. We're going in and talking about location with him, too. It would be cool if we could generate some interest there. Uh, He would definitely be a huge priority. But, uh... All right, let's see what happens with our first round of visits. Most, most important week of the year unless you screw it up in which case it's not that important oh we got Preston Means baby that's a good start that's a guy that had no interest we flipped him he was a three star guy alright Quentin Butler says he can't see it Treely liked it Quinn White liked it Means obviously dug it cool 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 good start Preston Means is a knight. Look at that. That's a we're starting off the dynasty the right way. You know what I mean? Which was it, White or Butler that said he just couldn't see playing for us? Butler. White liked it. All right, and that's not a surprise. But we are going to try again. <laughs> like, why not, right? Quinn White's getting the location pitch. Treely getting the location. Is there anybody else that we're interested in? Huss? Not so much. I see I can flip through right here. I know Ronald Henry's gone. We got means. All right, didn't stand out. Brett Hassel. So let's just go right here visit 
location done and so that's the improvement uh, we're into scheduling Preston's not breaking his arm look we're not we're not going oh god bless what is this look at that schedule it's one two three four five home games eight away games with five in a row seven out of nine our ad hates us and you can't change the the homer aways uh we can at least see let's go for some terrible i mean ter terrible home games we need wins louisiana tech no incarnate word yeah Howard Bison, yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, that that might be the best that we can do as far as getting some easy wins at home. <laughs> I don't know, that kind of feels brutal to me. Oh. All right, so Harmon's going to Moorhead State. Look at that, Treeley's hot. Hassel liked it. Quinn White's still out there and available. All right, we're, we're doing all right. We're hanging around right here. Butler still can't see it, so we're totally wasting our time on Quentin Butler, honestly. We've done two in-home visits. He's not changing his mind. And to be honest, he's too good of a – like, this dude should be going to a very, very strong program. He's got no business screwing around with Bellarmine Knights, so no worries there. Let's get out there and pitch location to our guys. We know that's where we're going to have the bigger advantage. I don't think anybody else you know what i'm not even going to worry about anything else we're going three visits baby three visits because we're getting two of these three players that's how it's going to work we're getting two out of two out of these three they're coming yeah it's a lot less info like you don't have to jump around nearly as much you can get it all right there on those screens and Believe me, the more players that you have interested in you, the more that's important. I can do a little bit of the recruiting from this screen right now. Look at that, Anthony Knight to the Louisville Cardinals. Quinn White to Florida State. That was our shooting guard, wasn't it? Oh, what the heck? Come on, man. You're killing me. You're killing me over here. All right, what do we get here? Jason Treeley's coming. Quinn White going to Florida State. So we very much need a guard, I believe, right? We got a center. We got a power forward. We could really use some guard play. You know, I mean, if I'm going to be losing to ACC schools, I, I can deal with that. That's not a shock, really. He has no interest, but we don't have any kind of camp information on this guy. Did he just not attend a camp? Oh, oh, he's a Juco. Well, we should definitely go and talk to him. All right. Let's look at guards only. So our top guard, Stephen Jenkins. I don't think any of them are going to be. Hold on, let's. Only look at available guards. So see, you can filter this down, and now we we, can, we should be able to scroll through here. No camp information. No camp info. All right, we're not getting a lot of camp info on these guys, so let's just offer Jenkins. Oh, well, actually, let me take that back. Let's look statistically and then at our rated, uh, our coach's ratings, right? You know, sometimes I aim at a certain school, Stanley. Like, a lot of times I would aim at Louisville. I'm not going to do that in this save. Um, I'm going to aim for a school that interests me. 
not necessarily any one specific school. And a lot of times I do just leave it up to chat. So you guys, I mean, if you're if you're interested and you want to participate and you want to have your hand on the rudder a little bit and steer me somewhere, uh, stick around. Enough streamer beverages and I might just go wherever you recommend. So <laughs> uh, that is TBD. Let's check out the ratings on these folks. Of course, the good defender doesn't have any interest. Uh, Andre York. Can't pass or dribble for a point guard. I uh, don't know about that. You know. God, his defense is so bad. But there's a point guard. He can at least handle the ball. He's got decent defense. Let's see if his statistics back this up. They do. At least the scoring certainly does. The assists, yeah. Alright, so let's throw an offer over here. Oh, we're number two on his list, actually. Let's host him. Let's visit. We've offered the scholarship. All right, so we've got two players that are absolutely going to improve this roster. Uh, we got two players, Beach Bear. I didn't. I don't remember exactly when you left. We got our center. We got our power forward. We lost the shooting guard to Florida State. So can't really worry about that too awful much. Uh, strategy. Here's another really cool update, guys. In the strategy page, it shows you all of your players and what they're proficient at. Um, so you can see, obviously, the seniors are going to be better at certain things. But also, just the color coding straight away is going to give you an idea. Like, you probably don't want to implement the shuffle. These guys are probably running Princeton, High Post, and Flex. And then you look over here, Princeton, High Post, and Flex is what they're already got dialed up. I do not think that maybe two players on this team have enough information to really be running the Princeton. Uh, we're going to run the flex in the high post 50-50. Whoops, zero. 50-50. So this is our strategy. Flex and high post is the offense. We're going balanced. We're going to do offensive sets. Uh, we got a sort of young team we're gonna go 65 percent defensively 90 percent man to man zone wise the 131 is what they've practiced so that's what we'll try out all right so 131 zone all right so we're not practicing the Princeton whatsoever the 131 zone five percent. We will go 10% full court man-to-man, -man, uh, and so a little bit less on the normal man-to-man. -man. Hopefully I can go 10, 10, and 10 here, which is my favorite thing to do. 20, 15. 20% flex, 15 high post. So let's save these changes. Bounce back over to strategy and go 60-40. Yeah, this is a really good screen for when you're trying to figure this out. So, all right, I like that strategy. I like that practice plan. Let's advance. See if we can't land uh, this other guard. We're pretty high on his list. But anyway, uh, we're ready to jump into some games here real soon, baby. Bellarmine Knights. I don't know what my knight... Uh, what can I do for the knights? Look okay. at is that what the knights do, right? A little parry action. A little sword thrust for the knights. I don't know. They don't have a... I don't have a hiss or a rattle or anything for a knight, but... I'll save you, my fair lady. I think that's what knights say. That's their uh, official call. First streamer beverage down. Man, I can't wait to get into these games and see what actually happens. I mean, it'd be more interesting to see what happens next year. Get a lance to joust. Yeah, I need a lance. I need to go. Uh, I'm sure my kids have like some toy swords or something somewhere, or I can get like a golf club to come through here. Like I can get a. Oh, check this out. Bow and arrow. My kids' bow and arrow. Like, just do like this. <laughs> 
I think that that's sort of like a um, jousting tournament, right? All right, we're not going to redshirt any of these guys. Uh, I I have reconsidered. I used to never, ever redshirt. Now I've sort of reconsidered that because I do see so often that the camp results tend to show current ability and the recruit ratings potential. So highly rated recruits that do poorly at camp that come in as like two-star guys, I started to redshirt them, and I've – I don't have enough information to say that I'm 100% satisfied that that's a good change in my strategy, but I do know that I like what I've seen so far out of it. So, here we go, baby. Bellarmine Knights, first season in D1. First season in college basketball 2021. Brand new journeyman save. I'm pumped. This season is going to be a train wreck. The next handful of seasons will probably all be train wrecks. Doesn't matter. You can't bring me down. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Need to work on the jousting. Let's try again. Let's try a second time. I need a little bit faster, right? I need maybe a shield. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can start it off in Division One the right way. James Madison. Uh, my sister actually went to James Madison. So we got all kinds of family ties here between Bellarmine and James Madison. Let's get it, Knights. Let's get it, Knights. First game in D1 history. 77-65. Put it in the record books for all time, forever. Cards and the Bellarmine Knights won their first ever game in school history ever, period. Winners. That's how history will remember us. Winners. You know what I haven't done is even look at our depth chart. We did just have a player get injured. Not that bad. Uh, I don't really have any strong feelings about this. I mean, our two best players are in there. I'm going to have the AI suggest it all, see if it wants to change anything. And it's actually going to put the injured player into the lineup. And it's not a bad injury. So if the AI says that's a good idea, I'll say it's a good idea. Headed to bed, Stanley. Oh, man, I'm glad you stopped by, though. I'm glad you stopped by. I'm happy to be streaming again on a new save, have everything set up. Hopefully, I'll be bringing you these. Uh, ideally, my goal is to do it weekly or more. Uh, sometimes weekly is about all that I can do. Sometimes life gives me some opportunities to, to bring a little bit more. But I thought, I don't know anybody else's opinion in the chat but i thought that the coolest stream i did for college basketball 2020 was the wrap-up stream where we went back and looked back ah oh, crushing defeat at home dartmouth the monsters of the ivy league uh, but anyway um i thought that the wrap-up was really cool if we could have 50 seasons to look at instead of 20 or 25 i think it would be even more cool so i uh, my goal is to have more seasons when we do that look back the next time. Because I, I just think it's cool for the immersion. It's cool for, you know, the, the stats and the history and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to get as many seasons in here as I possibly can. Uh, starting with as much as we can tonight. I don't know where I'm going to stop tonight. Uh, probably whenever I hear World War Four break out upstairs. I'm quite sure that... I've already streamed longer than anybody upstairs would have liked me to, but we're just going to keep rolling with it and see what happens, right? Midnight. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I'm going to midnight, but I understand that it's midnight on your side of the pond, buddy, and I really appreciate it. I'm glad you could stop by uh, hanging out late with us, and I will, you know, just like I did in the last version, I'm going to try to get some weekend streams. We take another tough loss, another injury. Todd Myers doing his thing. Uh, I'll try to get in some weekend streams at different times and whatnot so you can jump in, you know, not be bleary-eyed and uh, you know, just give you a chance to hit it in the afternoon or the early evening or something like that. You don't have to stay up all night to catch us. You know, I, I know there's people watching from everywhere, and I want to try to accommodate that when possible, but you know, I got uh, work and all that fun stuff too, so... It's not always possible. All right, here comes Incarnate Word. I tried to schedule myself a guaranteed win. Let's see if I can get this, make it happen. I don't even, like, this usually, like, I at least know, like, oh, it's the Louisville Cardinals and the Marquette Golden Eagles or whatever. Like, oh, the Incarnate Word is the Cardinals. So 
I guess I should have known that one, but I did not. I have no idea. Any of these teams that we're playing, I have no idea what their mascots are. All right, the Cardinals and the Knights. Normally, I'd be going for the Cardinals. Today, it's the Knights. Joust motion. Win the game. Damn, we lost. That was their first win of the year. <laughs> their first win of the year. We tried to schedule ourselves a guaranteed win. It backfired on us in a major fashion. Our team is a hot, flaming pile of garbage. And we are off to a 1-3 and three start. Eating home losses against incarnate word good news is we got help on the way especially on the inside especially on the inside so hopefully that along with the uh junior point guard that we've got who ideally will hang around the combination of all that together hopefully we get it going next year but this year is going to be extremely ugly so both of our Prospects sign their letters of intent, which means they will both qualify, so no issues there. If you guys didn't know, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a college basketball draft day sports college basketball life hack there for you. San Francisco Dons, home of what was a Bill Russell. They took care of us. Henry can't. David Thompson suffered an injury. We're getting beat up this year. The injuries are all over the place. They had uh, Bill Bill Russell reincarnate out there, beating on us. Either that or Marcus Camby's little brother, little cousin, nephew. Who knows? There was a Camby out there for sure. I saw that much. Mmm. The Utes took down the Wildcats, baby. That's right. Get out of here, Kentucky. Go home, Agalia. We don't want your kind here. You're not welcome. Get the Utes taking care of business at home against the Kentucky Wildcats. All right, so here comes another one of these games that I scheduled, trying to get us some wins at home. Uh, so let's see if we do any better against that. I do know the Howard Bison. I knew that one before it popped up. We're 1-4. Uh, 10 wins at this point looks like a total pipe dream. I don't see it happening. But a win tonight could change everything. The Knights and the Bison. Oh, my God. Like This is just depressing. We're terrible. We're terrible. You know what? It's the first year, first year in D1 Blues. That's what we're going to call it. Maybe we get into conference play and Kentucky Fried Wildcat. That is correct. Very correct. You know, Bellarmine might be terrible, but they're never as bad as the Kentucky Wildcats. So we're going to blaze right through this tonight, buddy. Chris, what do you think as far as uh, – I'm going to need you guys to hang around and see if we get job offers after this year. What should we – oh, my God. One and five Bellarmine on the road against seven and oh, number four Marquette. Uh, guys – if uh, right now in the chat, what are we calling it? We're going to call plus or minus 25. Who you got? I'm, st I'm taking Marquette at plus minus 25. I'll give you all a minute to discuss, throw your bets out. Plus or minus 25. I'm still going Marquette. Plus minus over under, whatever you want to call it. You want to give Bellarmine at least a year with me bringing in players? I mean, I, I kind of do too. I want to see what what those two inside players can do. I think they would be, they would put the program on the right path, regardless. <clears throat> All right, I see no wagers. I'm taking over under at 25. I'm still taking Marquette. Let's see what happens. Oh, we held with them. Is that 22? It's 22. Oh, the preview shows those numbers. Does it really? Haven't noticed that. Try to come up. Did, is the preview on that screen or do I have to click a button? I'll look around. I'm going to look for it on the next one. Because all we've got to talk about in this stream is, you know, the over, under, and uh, I mean, we're going to lose consistently. Yeah, Beach Bear went Golden Eagles too. You and I both, buddy. We, we were three points away from my unofficial over, under, but if, apparently there's an official over, under. Game preview. 
Mm. All right, so at New Orleans, they're a four and a half point favorite, and the over under is one thirty four. I'm taking New Orleans at four and a half all day, every day. New Orleans, four and a half. I'm going New Orleans. Who's the Zags? Zags are always dangerous in these saves. Woo! Bellerman Knights, baby! Frank Hamilton lighting it up in here. Oh my gosh. Don't call it a turnaround, comeback, whatever it is. The Bellerman Knights. Not only did we win our first game in history, but we just pulled the upset on the road in New Orleans. Man, I hope we hit Beale Street after that one. What a win for the Bellarmine Knights against the New Orleans whatever it was. That was awesome. All right, what kind of emails did we get there? Scouting report, scouting report. Okay. We still got an offer out on a player, right? Desmond Manning, and he has no interest? Why? He's a one-star recruit. That's odd. Huh. We might have to change that up. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll scout him live. Bring some of these guys in for visits at least. So it looks like we might have to be changing up our uh, our plan there at the guard position for sure. The Zags are rolling, buddy. The Zags are tough. Oregon State. Ooh. You know, you know it's bad when you're like, Oregon State, whoo, that's going to be a tough one. Oregon State sucks at basketball. They're awful. They're always bad. They're at the bottom of the pack. It's Oregon State and, uh, God, who's the other terrible one in the pack? Washington State. Oregon State and Washington State. Bottom feeders in the pack every year. If you go to Oregon State and you're like, whoo, that's going to be a tough one, you're an awful team. So... This is going to be really bad. Almost 20 points. Solomon Delea. He's obviously no relation to Delea from the uh, WSBA. If you guys are following the Wolverine Studios featured league on Pro Basketball 2021, uh, Delea is one of the best small forwards in the league. Uh, so Solomon there for the Bellarmine Knights is absolutely not a chip off the old block. He's the opposite of whatever that is. Uh, so. Oh, man. It's a long, long first season. Starting off 2-7. and seven. But we started off 1-0, and oh, officially. Whatever happened after that, i having some trouble remembering it. But we started off 1-0. and oh. I guarantee you that much. Washington State had Clay. Yeah. I, I mean... There's players that go through these schools. 20-point loss on the road to Colorado State. And there's players that go through every school, that's for sure. But, um, I mean, e even when they had him, how'd they do in the tournament? And I don't remember Washington State ever doing anything in the tournament. Anything. Got a handful of emails there. Let's see if we got any uh, recruiting news or if this is all... Oh, campus visit. All right. A couple guys like their campus visit, so that's good. Uh, we're really waiting until we get into the next in-home visit period. And, like, to be honest, none of the rest of these players blow me away at all, so we might carry that other scholarship over into the next year. It's not ideal, but I don't know that there's anybody... Like at, at this point, throwing a scholarship at any of these random one-star guys is such a crapshoot. It's not really worth it. Montana State Bobcats, 1-8. and eight. 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're still going to be favored, and they're probably still going to win. Look at that. Favored by five and a half, and they're going to win. Woo! I was wrong again. The Bellarmine Knights. Oh, my word. Oh, let's try that again. I got to get rid of this. I got a carpet right here. It's messing up my roll. Bellarmine Knights, baby. Three wins on the season. Seven more to go. Get it. Pac-12 fan club. We're not starting any wars with the Pac-12 fan club. Washington State and Oregon State are bad. Everybody understands that. Now, you, you want to start talking about, like, Washington? Uh, shoot, I mean, obviously Arizona, UCLA. But I like Washington a lot. Uh, I like Arizona State. I like Cal. I like a lot of teams in the pack. If I get an offer from the pack, uh, might be one and done here at Bellarmine. But, and I will say, I do think Chris is just uh, trying to keep me at Bellarmine because he doesn't want to have to do a thousand different graphics. But, you know, here's the thing, Chris. If, uh, if I do get a killer offer at the end of this year and I take it, Oh, got beat by cop and stayed at home, of course. Uh, you don't have to do a... Nah, 10 wins is still looking pretty far-fetched, to be honest. We're going to get into conference play, and it's going to get ugly. So uh, I'm not optimistic right now. After, if we had beat Incarnate Word, and if we had beat cop and state, yeah, it would it would look all right. But uh, at this point, I think it's a long shot. But anyway... Like, you wouldn't even have to, if it's just one and done at Bellarmine, instead of, like, some kind of Bellarmine thing, you just do some kind of, like, Zion or Anthony Davis or, like, some kind of one and done -er. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, so, l let's, let's just play this out tonight and see how things fly. Oh, Pennsylvania. Penn. Not even Penn State, just regular Pennsylvania. Okay. I mean, we're on the road, so... Hey, have we won two games? The Quakers! Have we won two games on the road? Frank Hamilton. Sol Solomon DeLay is consistently playing below average for us. So, uh, you know, given the talent level of our team, to be that consistently below average is pretty impressive, actually. It's pretty impressive. All right, so we're almost through December now. Creeping up on... Oh, UC got beat by SMU. Ouch. And see, this is just the doldrums of the first year or two. Like, I feel like this is... This is exactly the reason why I started off this save with a coach that was a little bit better so that we could get to a little bit more interesting games sooner. Like, this is... Uh, uh, the wins are exciting, but man, they're few and far between. We have no expectations. No love for these players, if we're being honest. Uh, it's it's a slog right now. It's the first season slog. That's why the journeyman saves are so interesting. Like They can go a million different ways, so that's, that's the hook. But you know the first way they're going is right into the gutter as you lose a bunch of games first off at a terrible school like Bellarmine. Not that they're a terrible school at a terrible basketball program that's trying to break into Division One. Let's put a smile on that, right? Happy face. Bellarmine's not terrible. They're just new. On the road against the Jacksonville Dolphins. Uh, okay. Never heard of this team ever. It's probably a conference game. And we got smoked. 15 points. I do not think 10 wins is happening. I really don't. For the record, if I was coaching the actual team, that's exactly what I'd be doing on the sidelines. Uh, you just got to suck them down and uh, hope you got reinforcements coming next year, right? Yikes. Yikes. Got a buzzsaw coming up. Kennesaw State, Lipscomb, Liberty. All right, so we're 0-1 in conference so far. Great start. The 
Kennesaw State Owls versus your Bellarmine Knights. Do, 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 do. Got the, oh, no, Kennesaw State took care of us at home. I was trying to get the uh, Chicago Bulls old theme song. And now, your Bellarmine Knights. But no, it's just like, oh, you lost at home to Kennesaw State. <laughs> Go home. Get out. What recruits did I get? I got, let me show you real quick. Uh, there's a button on the left side of the screen that shows your recruiting class. So we got two inside players, Jason Treely and Preston Means. Preston Means is a three-star. Uh, he's top 200 in the country. And he's got a rough work ethic. But he was decent at Memphis, which for us is good. That probably means, I think that the regional camps are 150 players. Um, so it'll tell you top 5, top 10, top 25, and then decent. I think that decent is top 50. So I think this is a top 50 regional player. We also got Jason Treely, same thing here. Decent, not spectacular. So I think this is another top 50 player at Memphis. Uh, and then we're in on Desmond Manning. If we can pull him, fine. If we can't, whatever. Uh, we didn't get our very top very top picks but these two guys will absolutely uh, anchor the inside of this team for the next four years unless one of them transfers or gets hurt so those are both really good pickups and a, a, a good step in the right direction for this program decent impression what are the the Chicago Bulls announcer guy I just watched the last dance over again so I mean, I got that, I got it like fresh in my mind, like I can still see the spotlights zooming around, you know. All right, let's see if we can get a little bit of uh, payback at Lipscomb. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. We still haven't played Lipscomb. I had them up there earlier, and then I got distracted with other things. People waving shiny things in the peripherals. All right, the Knights at Lipscomb. Nothing doing. Solomon Delay is still carrying us. No interesting emails. Is Delay the guard that's going to come back? No, that's Keeley. Solomon Delay is a junior small forward. So, I mean, that's good. We'll have Delay back. And he's playing well. Carlos Keeley, he's not really playing well. I mean, Delay. Oh, let's see. All right, now hold on. Yeah, I started this in windowed mode, apparently. Again, this was an issue with OBS. Frank Hamilton. So Frank Hamilton's our most influential player. Okay. Sorry if that uh, weird... My favorite announcer is the Hornets announcer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so for whatever reason, going from windowed to not windowed sort of messes with this thingamajigger. Because, like, if I bounce back over into windowed mode right now, and I don't know what you guys are seeing based on the way I've got it, but, like, I can just clear right through here. But if I take it full screen, it gives me a little bit of pain. But anyway, I'll just start it up in the right mode next time, and we won't have to worry about that. It was just the, the OBS state. Uh, the OBS update really threw off uh, a handful of things about this stream. But we got it figured out now. <clears throat> so hopefully it should be good going forward. We're about halfway through January, guys. We are sitting at 3 and 13. It is looking absolutely putrid for your Bellarmine Knights. But we got the 5 and 10 Liberty somethings coming in. We should have a chance. Liberty, 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 Liberty Flames. All right. We're taking them down. We're taking them down. We're taking them down. Big win for the Knights. Big win. Oh, my God. We lost to the Liberty Flames by 13 at home. Oh, my gosh. This team sucks. <laughs> the first year Division I Blues are real, and they're painful, and we are terrible. Help is on the way. Our inside game is going to be good gonna be there next year but as of right now we are trash it's official 
we're missing all of our goals. Luckily, we only had two goals, so our job security should only slide back from 100 to 80 percent. But uh, it's not pretty, and I'm not gonna pretend like it is. On the road at Stetson, man, guys. Like I said, it's a slog. The knights in not shiny armor. Yeah. These knights, like, they're on a three-legged horse, and they're wearing, like, garbage bags as armor. And they've got this thing is their lance, and they're legit sitting in their basement right now going, ah! That's the best they can do, man. Like, that's their real team. That's what they're doing right now, right this second. As you can see by losing uh, 13 points at Stetson. Uh, but so this is a slog. This is ugly. But, you know, sometimes from the ashes, something uh, something real happens, right? And so you never know. One, we've got two really good players coming in, uh, two guys that are going to fix some problems on the inside, of, on the uh, in the paint for this basketball team. Two, we're going to get offers at the end of this year, and I don't know what they're going to be, but... Uh, can't nobody hold me back. So if I see something cool and interesting, I will fly. I will fly. Yeah. 30 seasons in. Absolutely. 30 seasons in, in the last one, Muller. Uh, we went all the way up with what we were at Auburn. Is that where I finished? No, I finished at Louisville, obviously. Uh, but I was at Auburn, Nebraska, Tulane. I started off at Florida AM. and m 30 seasons in, we still remembered Eric Giles, the shooting guard that I recruited at Florida A&M. Like, we still checked him out at the end. What were his career rankings? Like, you remember all this stuff. So, I'm just going to remember this season. We're just getting st stumped. <laughs> They're using... <laughs> no, like... <laughs> I think they're they're catching the ball on the perimeter and they're like basket, ah! like they have no idea. They they don't know how to dribble. They got nothing. Like I got a. They're like they got nothing. They're, it's so bad. I have nobody out there that understands that if you put the orange thing in the round orange thing, you get points and then you can win games. Like nothing, nothing getting through the domes. I think in practice, like maybe it was a bad idea during practice to have like the cardboard shield and sword cutouts and have them just slash at each other. Uh, maybe we should have done basketball drills. Uh, but, you know, it, it was my first season. I was new. In fairness to me, I didn't know. Um, and it's their first season in Division One, so they didn't know either. So nobody really knew what we were doing. And everything went not right <laughs> now we're three and 16 wow three and 16 i don't think i've ever had a season this bad uh, this is bad uh, even at florida a and m like i think we won seven or eight games in our worst season but i will say i don't think that we were recruiting um i, I think that this for for a small school for a really, really low prestige school, I don't think I've ever, like, straight out of the gate recruited two solid players like we just mm -hmm. did. So we'll see how that pans out. Well, we, we don't have a third player to grab, so whether we get that guard or not is really quite irrelevant, in my opinion. The Northern, the North Alabama Lions. Ooh, Knights and Lions now. There's a jousting tournament. Be quick on your feet, boys. Oh, you couldn't do it. You got eaten by the Lions. Three and 17. Something tells me. Something tells me we're not winning 10. I don't know what it is. It's a premonition. Uh, call it streamer premonition. Man, oh man. <laughs> oh, what a first season. But... All, it only gets better from here, right? Like this was fun. I'm excited. It's good to, it's good to start off the stream with all the excitement and energy, because you know in a journeyman say like you were starting at the bottom and you were gonna get crapped on. So like, 
I'm glad I've still got first stream energy. Because <laughs> that's the only good thing we got going for us right now. Oh, my word. I need a school with a mascot that I can more easily impersonate. Hopefully it's not an osprey, because I do not know what they do. All right, North Florida and Bellarmine. Can we please, please get our fourth win? Yes, we can! Yes! Yes, 108 to 100. 108 to 100. I don't know if it went to overtime or what, but... You know, we sent our request up, and it was answered by eight points. 208 in a game. I guarantee that hit the over. Somebody in Vegas is awfully happy. So, Bellarmine's first season in Division One has been just an absolute train wreck. Chris says he got the art done. I hope, uh, I hope you didn't do anything more than like go out on the internet and find that picture. Have you ever seen the picture of the train that like went through the station and fell off the tracks and it's just like wrecked? That's all you needed for the art on this one. But I'm sure you did it really carefully and thoughtfully and, and put your time and effort into it. Um, but totally could have memed it. <laughs> the dolphin. Oh, now the dolphins want to come in to Knights Hall. You can't come into Knights Hall. Get out of here, you dolphins. It's a basketball court. We run this basketball court sometimes when the other team's not good at basketball. We will run you right out of the gym if you're really bad. Ah, no. They beat us at home. We are awful. <laughs> Muller's getting a kick out of the guy in Vegas betting on the Bellarmine Knights games. But man, you haven't seen me in 20 years. You never know what might happen. <laughs> I could definitely be out there in Vegas just like, who, the, who do the Knights have today? <laughs> oh my God. I really, really hope that these recruits show up and uh, turn this thing around. I'm really disappointed that top five guard would have been amazing to grab. I mean, it's absolutely no surprise that he went to a ACC school like Florida State, where he should be. But if we had landed him year two, we might have won the conference with a bunch of freshmen. All right, we're into February. We still only got four wins. At this point, five wins is looking like a stretch. But, um, <clears throat> you know, we'll stay optimistic. Knights and Owls. I don't know how this is going to work out. Uh, we're 1-8. and eight. They're 7-2. and two. Oh, my God. We won again on the road. 77-69. Eight-point win for your Bellarmine Knights. Dun, da, da. Holy cow. Scouting reports. Norton Awards. Um, I need to see the standings. So we're at the very bottom, obviously. But look at that. 2-8 and eight at home, 3-10 and ten on the road. We're better on the road. What is this? We're better on the road. That's insane. I've never. like. All right, that is, I will say this. Out of every season I've ever simulated on this game, out of every team I've ever played with, they've always been better at home. This is the first team I've ever had in my entire history of simming these games that has had a better road record. So let's see if that holds up. So not only do we have job watch to stick around for and see, can we end up being the first team ever to have a better road record? I guarantee nobody in chat's had a better road record than a home record either. If you've had a better road record than home record, speak up, please. I've never seen it, ever. Lipscomb Bisons coming into Knights Hall. A knight versus a bison. Come on. Yeah. All right. So now we pull even. Three wins at home, three wins on the road. Now we're at six. We're toward the end of February. If we can pull off another home win or two and do anything in the tournament, we could squeak in just by the skin of our teeth and get that 10th win. 
We got to six. Can we get to ten? Mueller said it wasn't looking far-fetched. That was about 20 minutes ago. Now it's looking pretty far-fetched. But we have a shot. <clears throat> February 13th. We still need to win four games. Now we're going to Liberty. Yeah, absolutely. Every win counts. There's no tanking. Tanking gets you nowhere. Need to win games. We already lost to Liberty at home. Can we beat Liberty on the road? We're better. We're, we're a better road team. You know, you you get away from all the high pressure of uh, Knights Hall, you know, historic venue. Uh, you get out there on the road. You don't have to think about the long tradition of Bellarmine basketball, and you just play ball, right? Here they go. No, the Liberty Flames took them out. I got an assistant coach coming down. Oh, you got me. Oh my goodness! Thank you, buddy. That's what. Thank you, buddy. All right, assistant coach uh, James checking in. Uh, let's see if that's a good luck charm that can get us over the hump and get us to our 10 wins. You a good luck charm for me, buddy? Yeah. All right, say go Knights. Good night. There we go. We got a good go Knights out of James. So let's see if we can make it happen now. Halfway through February, we probably got. Well, what are, what are we in conference? Three and nine, twelve. I mean, we could have as many as six games left. Let's jump over and check the schedule real quick. See how many games left we have, and then we'll kind of go from there. After we after we play the Mad Hatters from Stetson, they're ten and fourteen on the year, trying to come into Knights Hall. Like for once, let's protect this home court, please, please. God. Stetson roughs us up at home. <sighs> All right. Let's check the schedule, see how long we got left of this misery. Three more games. Put us out of our misery, please. Six wins. Ten is an absolute pipe dream at this point. So we are playing for next year, that is for certain. The question is, can we fend up, end up with a better road record than a home record, first of all? Second question, will we be back at Bellarmine next year? I mean, who wouldn't want to hire a coach who in his first year went 6-20? and 20? You tell me. I, I think every program in the nation is probably looking for that coach. Right? I mean, obviously... There will be some schools that are going to be interested just because of the the skill level that I started out at. Uh, but it's going to be a matter of whether or not we're interested in them and whether or not it would be fun to stream. Cause, you know, it would definitely be fun to get this Bellarmine program on track with the recruits that we just brought in uh, on stream if we don't have any really interesting offers. Like, I don't want to go to... I mean, I don't. I hate to beat up on them, but I don't want to go to Washington State or Oregon State. <laughs> I just don't. We don't just have to beat up on the pack. Like I don't want to go to Penn State either. But in fairness, I don't want to go to Duke. So I, I just want to find a program that actually interests me. All right, we're almost through February. We're wrap. We're. I don't want to say wrapping it up. We're. We're moving toward the end of this first. I don't even want to call it a season. It's a disaster, dumpster fire. We're moving toward the end of the dumpster fire. Uh, most of the tar and garbage is burned off, and we're down to the cinders of metal at the bottom. Uh, this has really just been brutal. There's nothing about this team or roster that interests me, makes me want to stick around. The, the cool thing about Bellarmine is that they're a brand new D1 school. So uh, to get the first win, like their first ever game in D1 was a win, 
That right there is what I'm looking for. Hey, it's Pusha Man with the follow. Thanks, buddy. Uh, really, really do appreciate that. I appreciate everybody that stops by, follows, watches, anything. Like it's just fun. I'm having fun and just trying to increase the increase the community for these games because I'd love to fill up that CBGM and have it just full of human players uh, doing all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so that's really the main reason I do this, uh, and it's just fun. So North Alabama coming into Bellarmine, going out with the big fat loser. The Bellarmine Knights, baby, seven wins, seven and 21 on the season. Oh, my God, could it be the turnaround? We have a game left at North Florida. We could get to eight. We could get to eight. Let's do it right now. Let's get some night hype. Night hype. Let's go, Bellarmine. Quick visit to the uh, streamer refreshment area all right one regular season game left then we got some well we have a tournament i was gonna say some tournaments because it seems like almost always you get some kind of postseason uh invitation but we're not getting postseason anything we'll go to our conference tournament and that is it so if we want to get to 10, we need to do it right now in two games in conference. Oh, Chris helped you out getting on the Mac. That's awesome. Chris, I hope you didn't mind me uh, offering up your services there free of charge. Did it for the league. Like doing it for the gram, I did it for the league. Did it for the BM. It's going down in the BM. If I'm a knight, I hate to be him. <laughs> Lost by 17 at North Florida. Oh, looks like our first season's going to end up an utter disaster. And I think we're going to go out with more home wins than road wins. So we didn't even get the cool thing. All right, charging forward, we're, we're going to be in and out of this conference tournament. Uh, I will get you guys an overview of what happens in the NCAAs, uh, but really the main event is going to be seeing, if, seeing what kind of offers come in, and then if there's cool offers, that's one thing. If there's lame offers, seeing how these recruits come in next year. Oh, man, that's awesome. You heard about us from somebody else that's already in the league. Uh, you know, the whole thing I talked about earlier is, like, I'm happy to give up all the secrets and everything I know. I've been playing these games since, like, uh, Draft Day Sports, College Basketball, 15, 16, something like that. I've been around for a bit. And people are like, oh, don't give away all your secrets. So, like, why? Like, anything I know I want to share with people so that they can be better at the game, enjoy it more, and make it all more competitive. So, uh you know, if you can, if you want to hop on streams or hop on YouTube and watch stuff that I've done, or, or you want to like hit up on Discord, I'm more than happy to help out anybody, anytime, anywhere. Uh, I want to have a popping, popping uh, multiplayer league. So the more good players in there, the better. Glad to have you here. Super glad to have you here. Glad that your buddies are uh, spreading the word. First sports management game. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's a it's a different thing. You know, you're not controlling the players, and that was something I always found uh, in console games. Like I played a lot of NCAA football, right? And I always found like I couldn't find the right difficulty level. Either I was beating the computer ridiculously, or 
it was so unfair like their guys would be running the opposite way and then just do a backflip and intercept my pass or something so like the difficulty level never worked right so i always wanted to just step back and let the ai run the simulations that's the really really cool thing about all of these games and draft day sports has it for pro college basketball pro college football uh, they've got a golf game uh, college basketball is my favorite sport so that's the one that i play the most it's the one that i stream the most and know the most about and so if you've got any questions at all do like shout it out in chat I'll, I'll try to answer uh shoot me a discord link whether it's a message or uh on the gm games discord you know whatever just just reach out youtube comments whatever i'll help out where i can and and everybody will this is an awesome community that's the coolest thing about these games uh oh do i have any players declaring for draft shockingly no uh, the coolest thing about these games is the community is really great. Apparently, I've just been simulating through the uh, selection show for a minute while I'm running my yak. But yeah, it's a cool community. Uh, everybody's just looking to expand the community, expand the knowledge, help people out. Let's take a look through what the NCAA tournament's going to look like. I tell you one team you're not going to see there, and that's the Bellarmine Knights. <laughs> All right, these are the first round games, aka play-in games. Oh, they actually call them the play-in games in game. That's funny. No first round pick. <laughs> yeah, check out the YouTube videos. Oh, I've got the tips video from last year most of it's still relevant but i fully intend to do another like top 10 tips video this year so uh keep an eye on the gm games youtube for that oh i'm sorry breeze for the the loud audio that obs uh update messed up everything all my presets so it probably went back to a default level all right, guys, so in Charlotte, first round, Arizona Wildcats, the Gonzaga Bulldogs, the Kansas Jayhawks, and the Virginia Cavaliers are your top seeds. Texas A&M, NC State, UConn, UNC, a 10 seed. That 7-10 matchup with UConn, a couple of powerhouses uh, struggling this year. And then the Corn Huskers, a little bit of CB20 there for you, uh, against the Indiana Hoosiers. All right, St. Louis. The Texas Longhorns are the one seed. The Marquette. Are they the Eagles or the Golden Eagles? They used to be the Golden Eagles. I think they're just the Eagles now. The Gators. The Sooners. EKU. I should have gone to I should have gone to Richmond. Is that Richmond? Whatever. I should have gone to EKU. The Buckeyes, a five seed. Kansas State Wildcats. Notre Dame and Oregon. Arkansas. And the Jaspers of Manhattan. 26 and 6. What a season out of Manhattan. In Houston, Louisville Cardinals. That's right, baby. One seed. Check them out. 25 and 7. The Louisville Cardinals in Houston. The favorite to advance. Oh, Michigan State. My word, the Spartans are going to be tough to overcome. The three seed Illinois, the Illini of Illinois, and the BYU Cougars grab the four. So Houston is stacked. Richmond, Pitt, Washington, Memphis, Colorado. Out in Oakland, the Alabama Crimson Tider, a one seed. Got to be the first in school history. Villanova Wildcats, a two. Michigan Wolverines at the three. The Hoyas, a four. Iowa, Providence, Georgia Tech. Mountaineers, the Cardinal, and that's that. So, interesting tournament going on here. Yeah, the music's the best part, but I've got to fix the audio so that it doesn't blow out everybody's eardrums. Shockingly, I'm not going to a postseason tournament. Uh, I'm not even going to bother trying to visit this guard. Uh, what I'm going to do is just play through these... Uh, get to the Final Four, do a quick recap. We'll play those two games, and then we'll hit the end of season stuff. You think if I ask for a budget update, they'll do it this year? 7-22? and 22. I mean, that's not bad, right? It's not bad. Kennesaw State got in. They must have won the... Jeez, uh, I don't even know what conference I'm in. They must have won whatever conference I'm in.
Florida State. The Seminoles, oh, that's quite the upset. Oklahoma was a good seed. Florida State was a 7 or... Florida State, I think, was in a 7-10 matchup. Oklahoma was a 2, right? Am I misremembering that? Oh, was... Wait a second. That was a Monday, and that was Duke. Duke missed the NCAA tournament. Ha! Suck it, Duke. Ooh, Florida upset Marquette. What kind of email did I get? The commitment? Oh, team incident. Oh. You know what? I could care less about the players on this team right at this moment. <laughs> I really could. Florida State going off. Upset number six, Florida. Oh, my word. That sends Florida State to the Final Four, I believe. Yeah, let's go check out this Final Four, guys. All right, so the Charlotte region. It's Chuck, Arizona over Gonzaga. Arizona over Virginia. Gonzaga over NC State, who upset Kansas in the Sweet 16. Nothing crazy there in Charlotte. In St. Louis. Texas came out, got beat by Florida State. Florida upset Marquette. But then Florida State, the 12 seeded Seminoles of Florida State, stumped. Stumped the Florida Gators 81 to 60 to move on. You got a 12 seed in the Final Four. Oh my word. Look out for the Seminoles in Houston. Oh, we got chaos in Houston. The number one seeded Louisville Cardinals. My boys, they fell to the Buffaloes of Colorado by two and a close one. And then Colorado, BYU, BYU on to the Elite Eight. Can't get past the Spartans of Michigan State who are moving on. This side of the bracket looks a little bit more reasonable. And in Oakland, Alabama upset by Stanford in the Sweet 16 who can't get past Georgetown. Georgetown, Villanova in the Elite Eight, and Georgetown to the Final Four. So look at this Final Four. You've got the Arizona Wildcats, the one seed. Michigan State Spartans, a two. Georgetown, a four. And the Florida State Seminoles as a 12 seed trying to make history. Cinderella, still alive. Like, gives me goosebumps. In a simulation, guys. In a simulation game. The Florida State Seminoles, a 12 seed, are in the Final Four, and I got goosebumps. That's crazy. Like, it just brings back all these memories of, like, Jimmy V running around the court with NC State with his arms up like that, looking for somebody to hug. Like, that's what I see right now. Wow, the 12 seeded Seminoles. Whew. Pretty special stuff. My word. Goosebumps on a Thursday night. All right, let's get back to the game's grid. <clears throat> let's see if Cinderella can stay alive. I just imagine, like, she, she's supposed to turn into a pumpkin at midnight or something, right? Now it's like 3 a.m. and she's still sitting there like, guys, like, I, I still got my dress. I just still got my glass slipper. <laughs> when I, when, am I still turning into a pumpkin or, like, can I keep going? I, got, I feel like that's what Florida State... Oh, Georgetown beat Michigan State. And I, I missed the Florida State game. I should shut up and just watch, right? Uh, only one way to see. Let's move ahead and see who's in the finals. Oh, it, it, Arizona beat them. And then Arizona beat Georgetown. All right, so Cinderella died in the Final Four. Um, but... <laughs> not going to subject you guys to that music as long as the uh, audio levels are not appropriately set. So, Gonzaga, Arizona, Lewis Flippin, Sean Miller, Coach of the Year. There's your first team All-Americans. Louisville, Louisville, Alex Lofton. Second teamers. Okay. Uh, I think I'm in the Atlantic Sun. Yeah. Atlantic Sun. Individual awards. Oh, look at that. Freshman of the year, Frank Hamilton. That's right. Bellarmine, baby. 
Bellarmine, baby. Uh, Coach of the year, I don't know how I didn't win it. I won seven games. Uh, okay. Got robbed. First team, all-conference. Second team, all-conference. Nothing doing for Bellarmine, but we did have freshman of the year. So that's a small forward to go along with the inside guys that we're bringing in. The point guard we already had. We're looking all right. We might have a good second season if we get to a second season. I, I was robbed. I was absolutely robbed. Seven and twenty-two, and they think this guy that won twenty-two games is better than me. What a joke! How unfair could it possibly be? I think the simulation might be glitched, actually. I might put in a uh, trouble ticket. Season review. Failed. Failed. That's weird. Oh, we're still at 90% job security, so they did not care if we hit those job goals. Those were more like job wishes, not goals. Like, oh, well, you could win a few games. That'd be cool. All right, this will be the interesting part. I'm kind of hoping there's no good jobs, but I also kind of hope there's some really cool jobs. All right, so not so much. No, nothing here. We're staying at Bellarmine. Uh, not that Davidson wouldn't be cool. Not that Houston wouldn't be kind of cool. You know, five slamma jamma. Houston would be kind of cool. <laughs> UC Irvine on probation. Thanks, but no thanks. Well, the home of Steph Curry in the A10, baby. They got good facilities, good academics. I mean, both of those, the Houston and Davidson jobs, are both massive jumps in. Got to save the art and make an episode two. <laughs> I think that's Chris saying he, he's got no interest in any of these. I don't know that I do either. Although the, the oh. I don't know. It, it kind of depends, right? It kind of depends. Uh, you could turn Houston into what they used to be. That's cool. They're in the American, so they could like they could have a. Uh... Yeah, Davidson does have everything. Bellerman doesn't. Uh, Houston could totally be, like what you see is in a lot of years, right? <sighs> does anybody have any strong interest in any of these teams? Because, to be quite honest, I. I don't think that I do. I don't think that I do. I think that these jobs are pretty... I mean, the Houston one would be cool. And I'm sure Davidson has its own thing, but... Houston is the coolest out of all of these. All right, so we're just advancing. We're going to see what this recruiting class brings. We're going to see what next season brings. Hopefully some more interesting offers. Yeah, Houston is the move, but no, UC Irvine. We're not, no, no, no. When I say UC, I don't mean UC Irvine. I mean University of Cincinnati. All right, staff hiring. My staff should probably be completely gone. That's right. All right, let's see. The boys at Tulane. <laughs> yeah, I love my Tulane boys. That's for sure. Starting budget of 151. All right. <laughs> Chris just spent like an hour putting together a... Putting together a graphic. <laughs> Sitting over there dying just... My bad. I, I didn't mean to leave you in that much suspense. Tim Murphy. Is that who we already had? So 
Let's offer him 45 for four years. Curtis Weathers, who we already had. Second assistant. 17 to 54, so let's give him 35. Just to get through this, because I, I really don't think that, like, I should have saw and talked about Houston more. <laughs> Thought about it, buddy. Thought about it. Bellerman, Bellerman. All right, so we got all our coaches. We're good. I mean, Houston could have been interesting, right? I mean, have they been good since Olajuwon and uh, Drexler? Petition the board. <clears throat> the Cougars would have been interesting. I feel like it kind of would have been a Tulane kind of thing, though. And I don't know if I want to do a Tulane, like, in the middle kind of thing this year. You know what I mean? Huh. Not putting that kind of money into a losing program. <laughs> uh, you know, when you're right, you're right. <laughs> You've got a point there, board. That is fair. We were a losing program. Yeah, Houston would have been a really cool intermediate step, but um, I don't know. It would have been like... Uh, mm, I want something a little bit more significant when I leave. A little bit more significant. They do keep it real. They do. Like, you know what? You suck. You get no money. You get no facilities. Like, you know what? If your basketball has a weird little hump in the side of it, just deal with it. It's not like your players know the difference. Well, five scholarships this year. Yikes. We never did land that guard. You notice he never committed elsewhere, but he never uh, committed us either. Yeah, that's accurate, Kamano. When you win, you're always doing just fine with the resources you already got. All right, so last year, Bellerman was supposedly in the top 100. Now they're 176. I don't buy that for a minute. Not for a minute. We're definitely taking the premium report this year. It's just such an advantage. I'll I'll sit there and recruit in state all day long. Nobody transferred. We're gonna skip the transfer sessions. I did my best to like kind of go cross-eyed and not look on my dashboard when it was showing my current players. Because I always like to get past the transfers before I look at my roster. You guys already saw what the freshmen look like don't tell me i'm hoping i'm really really hoping they can start or at least be serious contributors between the small forward they got player of the year uh freshman of the year the guard that was already three stars who will be a senior this year and those two freshman inside guys i think this is a team that can win 10 games certainly all right, we're on June 25th. Let's take a look. Preston Means showing up as one and a half. Charlie Hill, a senior, is showing up at three. That's interesting. Treely showing up at two. Salman DeLay is three. Keeley is three and a half. Interesting. Okay, okay. Going to Georgia and Memphis again. Always.
once we hit the 26, I'm going to save it and then take a quick look at the roster and the individual uh, statistical things like scoring, defense rating, that sort of thing, and see what everything looks like. So let me save. I mean, if you just purely go by star rating, this team is definitely better already. Uh, the freshman don't show up yet. I mean, two stars and one and a half star. At, I don't know. But I've got a lot more faith in him. I will tell you that for sure. Treely's good uh, potential. Means got good potential. We still don't have a great score. Carlos Keeley is a pretty good defender for this level. He's got a five defensive rating. That's solid. His scoring is not good. But outside of that, like he's got a good passing rating. Look at his def uh his rebounding for a guard. Keeley's a pretty good player there. We're gonna miss him next year. We definitely need to find a guard to replace him. Hopefully one of these guys can step up. Charlie Hill, the senior, also a pretty good defensive rating for this level. Pretty good defender. So it looks like Keeley and Hill will probably lead us. We got Frank Hamilton coming back for his sophomore campaign. I don't know how he did as well as he did, but you, know, you take what you can get, I suppose. Oh, yeah, yeah. That fr the, the people I recruited are playing, period. All right, we're going to delete all of that. Uh, I mean, if we if we go back over here and look. All right, inside means he's the best inside shooter. He's the best jump shooter. He sucks at free throws. Tied is the best scorer. Passing and handles are bad, obviously. He's not nearly as good a rebounder as either of these. He's close defensively. He falls off over here. But that's as a freshman compared to a senior, two seniors. Like He's very talented. He'll be just fine in a year or two. Uh, and then we look at Treely. Oh, oh okay. Power forwards. Uh, better free throw shooter, but he's definitely a better scorer. So, like, just the scoring alone is almost enough to make him the starter. Let's check the rest of the ratings, though. He's a much better offensive rebounder. He's a better defender. Nowhere near as good at drawing fouls, but he's got a better defensive IQ, but he is not as athletic. So, overall, I think Treely probably starts, although it's close. Um, means, as a freshman, a bit behind the two seniors, but very talented. He'll be as good as, as good as they are as seniors. He'll be that good as a sophomore, junior. Um, so all good there. Our inside looks very solid. With Hamilton and Delea at the small forward and Keeley at guard, we're really just a couple of guards away from being halfway decent. So we've got five scholarships. We need one two need two guys on the inside a small forward and a couple of guards the good thing is all of our guards were so young now the bad news is we lose Keeley the good news is all the rest of them have a, a year or two more to develop so we've got time at that guard position but um guys we went Two hours and 15 minutes. We got all the way through the inaugural season. The Bellarmine Knights won their first game. Ultimately, it was a dumpster fire of a season. Only seven wins. The uh, the job offers in the offseason. Houston was by far the most interesting one, along with Davidson. Uh, but we we wanted to come back and see what Treely and Means were going to do. Um, see how they could contribute in a second season. Uh, my suspicion is this team might be barely better. Like, th this team probably has a more realistic chance at 10 wins. But um, 
<clears throat> ultimately over the next couple of streams, we're probably looking for consistent improvement at Bellarmine and uh, keeping an eye on the, the right offers. Uh, so uh, that's sort of my plan for this stream. But as always, I'm subject to suggestion, change. You guys want to reach out, say what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Uh, I'm all good. I'm here for the community and raising awareness and having some good times. And uh, those 12 seed goosebumps when Florida State hits that final four. So, uh, you know, just let me know, guys. Reach out and chat, Discord, GM Games, private message, YouTube, whatever you're doing. Uh, love to have so much interaction with you guys tonight. Love the audience. Glad to have you guys. I hope you had half as much fun as I had because I had an absolute blast. But I'm going to call it right here. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> we we had a great night, and uh, uh, like I said, I want to be bringing more streams this year than I did last, so that we can have more of that history built. So that's the goal. I'll see when I can get back to it. But for now, that's all she wrote. I'm out. I'll see y'all next time.